Hey, this is Off the Cuff, and I'm Steve from TorahFamily.org. Today we want to talk about being 501c3. Now, in our case, it would be not being 501c3. You know, there's lots of debate on this topic, and this is not a condemning of anyone who disagrees with our view. This is simply a brief explanation of where we stand on the topic, currently anyway. We've had lots of emails come in to us. Some have said, we're so glad you're not 501c3. <laughs> and then we've had people tell us, we'd support you if you were 501c3. And then others have said, why aren't you 501c3? Why are you willfully paying taxes? That being said, 501c3 is all about taxes. More specifically, not paying taxes not paying taxes to the government who decides where those taxes are spent, right? Now, any government that is not following after Yahweh is going to be corrupt, at least to some degree. Even Rome was corrupt. I mean, Rome even followed their own gods, worshipped different gods. But yet, what did Yeshua say about paying taxes to Rome? Consider Matthew. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Yeshua, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius. He asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Meaning what? Pay your taxes. Corrupt government or not, pay your taxes. Now, 501c3 is an agreement between you and the government to where you don't have to pay taxes. But we just read from Yeshua where he said, pay your taxes. <laughs> he didn't say try to find a way to where you don't have to pay them. Now, then you have the government come along and say, hey, are you a church organization? Don't want to pay your taxes? No worries. Fill out all this paperwork, sign on the dotted line, and you're good to go. But what is that? Well, that's an agreement. In essence, it's a treaty. Now, that being said, consider the following. Exodus chapter 34, be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land where you are going, or they will be a snare among you. A snare is something you don't see coming, something that is a danger to you, thus a hidden danger. So what may look and may even be good at first could turn on you in the end and be a snare. We've heard arguments where people have said, you know, if things go south, we can just drop the 501c3 status and then not be under that agreement anymore. The thing is, though, it's not quite that easy. There's paperwork to submit that they have to approve to let you drop that agreement. And, you know, we all know how fast paperwork can go, right? And we understand when people tell us, you know, man, if you were 501c3, we'd start supporting you. We understand that. We understand that it can be a benefit to everybody to a certain degree. And we know that we would probably start receiving a lot more income. But at this time, we just don't have the peace on it. Now, someone could say, that's a double loss for you, Steve. Not only are you losing out on supporters for not being 501c3, but you now have to pay taxes on the support you are receiving. Yes, that's true. But Paul even said that he counted everything as a loss compared to knowing Yeshua. We just count it as doing what we believe we should be doing at this time. Again, this is not condemning anyone who is 501c3. This is just letting you know why we are not 501c3 at this time. It's just where we are at our walk at this time. Well, that's all we have. Think about it. 
pray about it. But more than anything, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Until next time, shalom.